Hello everyone. When we are kids, waiting is perhaps the hardest part of life. Parents might know this better than anyone else. An example is being on a road trip when either because we are excited about the destination or because we are simply bored, we would just keep asking, are we nearly there yet? Friends, waiting for special occasions such as birthdays, Christmas, New Year or other events seems to take forever when we are small. As we grow up, waiting is still hard. Many of us dislike waiting, whether it is waiting for a train or food or waiting in line at grocery stores or banks. We also do not like to be kept waiting for someone regardless of whether the person is our parent or sibling or friend. Oftentimes we wonder why we have to wait for everything. Can't we just get all the things instantly? Yes, it seems impossible. Friends, sometimes no matter how much faster we want something to happen, all we can do is wait. It is hard enough waiting for something that we want, but to wait for something that has been promised or that which we believe we deserve is much harder. It is even harder to wait on the promises of God, especially when there are no guarantees that our waiting will ever end in this lifetime, when we have no idea what and when God will fulfill His promises. Friends, more often than not, waiting can make us hopeless, angry, frustrated and disappointed. But today's second reading from the letter of St. James instructs us to wait upon God and not to lose heart. Friends, the letter of James is recognized as the oldest book of the New Testament, written perhaps as early as 45 AD by a man named James, the son of Alphaeus and the relative of Jesus but known as the brother and the apostle of the Lord and the leader of the Jewish Christian community in Jerusalem. Friends, though the letter is considered a general letter to all the early Christians, it was addressed to the twelve tribes of Israel or the first Jewish Christians who were scattered outside Palestine upon the persecution that arose after the martyrdom of Stephen. Friends, Today's passage is a part of the instruction in which James encouraged the Christians to wait with patience for a special event. Early Christians, including Apostle James, Paul and others, had been expecting Jesus' imminent return for a long time, which of course did not occur even within their lifetime. But they were becoming impatient because of many difficulties and hardships on many friends. First of all, the churches were splintered by quarrels and conflicts, largely as a result of envy, pride, greed and fraud. Many believers were amassing wealth by oppressing and defrauding their fellow believers, a practice strictly forbidden in the Old Testament, while the rich were oblivious of the problems of the poor, the poor were envious of the rich. On the whole, their practices were inconsistent with having faith in Christ and they were living as if Christ were never coming back. Secondly, many believers were experiencing persecution for their faith at the hands of fellow Jews. They were being expelled from their communities and synagogues by those opposing Jesus' messiahship. Thirdly, many Christians were being arrested, tortured, mutilated burned, starved and put to death for their refusal to worship the Roman gods or take part in their sacrifices which was expected of those living in the Roman Empire. Friends, it was under these circumstances that James, as one of the chief leaders in the church at Jerusalem, wrote to encourage the scattered Jewish followers of Jesus in the diaspora to live as Christians should and bear witness to Christ through their heroic lives without waiting for the return of Christ in their lifetime. 
he wrote, Be patient until the coming of the Lord. Friends, what is patience? Patience is defined as the ability to endure waiting, delay, provocation, misfortune or pain without becoming annoyed or upset or to persevere calmly, especially when faced with difficult circumstances. As someone said, patience is not the ability to wait, but the ability to keep a good attitude while waiting. Friends, a biblical scholar defines patience as a long protracted restraint of the soul from yielding to passion. Another scholar describes it as self-restraint, which does not hastily retaliate a wrong. Friends, it can therefore be said that James was exhorting the believers who were suffering to exercise restraint over the tendency for revenge until the Lord's intervention in their situations. In other words, they were to live patiently with those who wronged them, with the realization that Jesus could come back any day. Friends, James then used the imagery of ancient farmers in Israel, who, after sowing the seeds, waited patiently for the planting season's early rain, which helped the seeds to sprout and to grow, and for the latter rain, which helped plants to mature before harvesting. Friends, this analogy is used to teach them that, like the farmers, they must also patiently preach the gospel and nurture one another, whilst believing that salvation would eventually come. Friends, and then James gave three additional instructions about what they must do. 1. He exhorted them to make their hearts firm. In other words, as they waited patiently for the Lord to return, he wanted them to stand firm in their adherence to the faith in the midst of temptations and trials. Just as Jesus was resolute and determined to go to Jerusalem, although he knew he faced death when he arrived there, James wanted the Christians to be resolute, firm and courageous in their commitment to following Jesus, no matter how severe the trials were and with their hope for Christ's return at the end. 2. He admonished them not to complain about one another, so that they would not be judged. Friends, though some translations of the Bible use grumble or murmur instead of complain, the phenomenon is essentially the same. Simply put, Complaining or grumbling is an expression of negative feeling to something that is unpleasant or inconvenient or hard in a low or half-articulated voice. Friends, grumbling did not start with the early Christians. The Bible records many examples of complaining to God. It has been one of the human traits since the time of creation. For instance, in the Garden of Eden, when God asked Adam what happened, Adam blamed Eve for his sin, complaining to God, saying that the woman God had given to be with him gave him fruit from the tree and he ate it. Friends, the implication was if God had not given her to him, he would not have sinned. Here, instead of blaming himself, he blamed her and God. During their desert warnings, the Israelites grumbled against Moses, Aaron, and God, and wished they had stayed in Egypt. The Pharisees and the scribes often grumbled at Jesus' teachings and his association with the tax collectors and sinners. Friends, in a similar way, the early Christians were also complaining about one another. They had forgotten the fact that, at their conversion, they were adopted into God's family through Jesus Christ and continued to behave in ways that are contrary to the nature of God's children. That is why James appealed to them to act like the family of God. Besides, he also reminded them that the Lord Jesus is the true judge standing at the door and that when he comes, he will not only judge their persecutors and enemies, but also judge them if they failed to be patient. This meant that 
whatever judgment they would make on others is the same judgment God would use on them. 3. James encouraged them to take as an example of hardship and patience the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Friends, although James did not elaborate on this, the Jewish Christians might have well understood this simple reference. All the Old Testament prophets remained faithful to deliver God's message through the difficult circumstances of their own lives. Many of the prophets were persecuted and killed. For instance, the historians tell us that Prophet Isaiah was sowed into two under the evil king Manasseh of Judah. Prophet Jeremiah complained to God, sounding a lot like Job, even accused God of deceiving him and asked him several times to wreak vengeance against his enemies, and yet he held steady and waited on the Lord till the end. Eventually, he was stoned to death by his own people. Prophet Amos was tortured severely by Amaziah, the priest from Bethel, against whom Amos had prophesied. He was also mortally wounded with a club by Amaziah's son. So friends, we see that even when their outward circumstances caused them to complain against and doubt God, these prophets had remained faithful to what they were called to do. And James alluded to these prophets to urge the persecuted Christians in his time to exercise patience as they waited for and looked forward to the coming of the Lord. Friends, what is the message for us? 1. The period of waiting is perhaps one of the most difficult parts of the Christian life, especially when you feel so desperate for God to intervene in a situation in life. Waiting is so hard, and at times can even test your faith. But in these times, friends, whether it be that your sickness is not getting healed, or the new job is not coming as expected, or your relationship with someone is not working, or a sin that you are struggling to overcome, you must not give up your hope and your faith in God. You must be like the farmer who waits patiently for the harvest and does not grumble. Continue to stand and remain in faith that God will deliver you from your troubles and turn your present situation into an enjoyable one. For the scriptures say that those who will wait on the Lord through faith will not be disappointed or let down or put to shame. 2. Friends, suffering is a normal part of life. Especially as Christians, we should expect some suffering. Everyone who is walking for Christ and seeking to live a godly life will be persecuted. And therefore, friends, we should expect it and not be surprised when painful trials come on our way. We do not need to be surprised as though something strange is happening to us. Friends, James's exhortation to the early Christians is a reminder to us that we can expect to suffer for Christ but we can also expect joy to come through that suffering. 3. Friends, when we are wronged and ostracized by our own families, when you are falsely accused at work and even get fired, or when our friends betray us and spread vicious gossips to others, we do not have to throw the blame on them for our troubles or God for the evils of the world. Friends, Especially during the season of waiting, we must refrain from grumbling against one another and judging one another. Instead, we should heed the admonition of the Apostle James by following the examples of the prophets through being patient in our suffering and putting our hope and trust in God. Friends, it is easier to be patient in the midst of trials and tribulations in life when we believe that God is with us. And as we endure the hardships, let us comfort one another with the James's reminder. Be patient, strengthen your hearts, and know for certain that the Lord is full of compassion. Amen. God bless you.